Welcome to the Mom Owned and Operated Podcast, the podcast about moms and for moms, where we have candid conversations about running a business, raising a family, and remembering ourselves. I'm your host, Rita Suzanne, a single mom of four, digital strategist, and provider of no-nonsense business strategies and tactics. Hi, this is Rita Suzanne, and today I have my guest, Jennifer Bennett, with me. Jennifer, I'm so excited to chat with you and learn all the things about um, you, your family, and how you are doing all the things. So please tell us a little bit more about you. So I am Jennifer. I um, get dusty, and I am also a mother of two. I've been married for about 16 years. Um, and I, for the longest time, was a stay-at-home mom, started kind of dabbling in stay-at-home work um, as a real estate agent, and now I'm a business owner with my mom, actually. That's what I love, I think, the most about your story is that you started a business with your mom. And as I was mentioning to you before, I did the same thing, and um, it was is definitely a different experience. How is it working yeah. out with you guys? It's going well. So she's definitely more of a numbers lady. She has helped my dad for the last 50 years with his consulting business, basically doing his books um, and things like that. So she she does the books, but she's also very creative. So she helps with a lot of the graphic work and things like that. So it works out really well. Um, we've always had like a special relationship um because my dad would travel when I was younger so for a lot of the times it was just being mom so we always kind of developed that special bond and we just kind of took it to get desky and so we're here to you know encourage other moms that you can be able to have that work-life balance and still be able to build a business yeah so tell me what or tell everybody what is get desky and like what do you guys do so Get Desky is a virtual assistant company, um, and we do things a little bit differently. We don't match people with an assistant. We do everything as a team, and we are a team of stay-at-home mothers that want to be able to have that work-life balance, to be able to have that freedom and that flexibility to be able to provide for our families, but also be with our families, too, and be present. Um, with them because when I was growing up and even when I had our first daughter the biggest challenge that we had was we could put our daughter in daycare and um, somebody else would raise our kid or my whole check would go to be raising that kid or I could stay at home and I could do that there was not a lot of remote options when my 17 year old was an infant now there is, you know, there's this, there's this space now for remote work to where moms can be able to do both at the same time. And a lot of moms want to be able to do that. They want to provide for their families and be able to be present for their families as well, too. Well, and sometimes you need two incomes and you can't afford yeah. to send your kids to daycare. Um, so it's a necessity for yeah. the second person to find some kind of something to bring in. And like, we are lucky yeah. because we have all of these opportunities online. Do you guys specialize in anything in particular at Get Dusky, like services? So we specialize a lot in social media. A lot of people want us to be kind of the voice behind the brand. So doing the copies, creating the graphics, really engaging with the audience. Um, we also have some clients that want us to do administrative and executive tasks, you know, creating um, reports, analytics, um, they're really specialized proposals, um, things like that. Um, but we really, really um, can't handle most administrative tasks remotely. And I, I love that you um, have everybody work, everybody in the team is aware of the project and um, and is kind of on board with it. So there's no downtime should somebody um, need to not be there or training yeah. of if somebody decides that this is not a good fit for them. Yeah. And, and it also allows me to, as a leader, to be able to see, you know, when a new... A 
person comes in and they really struggled with learning a new skill that they wanted to learn and it finally connects with them. So I could then see in our Slack channels or in our project manager um, tool that we use and I could celebrate with them. I could go there and be like, hey, like you're doing an amazing job at this. Like this is like you did it. Um, and I think that's that's the most important part of you know the team that I have is really celebrating those even minuscule wins. Um, it, it really encourages my team to just want to come in and the next day just be better than they were yesterday. I like that. So when they cause some of them when they come to you, they just have no experience at all. And do you mm-hmm. have a lot of systems and processes in place? Do you have like all of those SOPs, like how are you teaching them? Are you teaching them individually? So we have specific tools that we use and we allow them to learn those tools, you know, so our graphic design software is Canva. And so we really let them, you know, kind of learn from Canva and then also be able to, you know, get feedback of like, Hey, like this line is too thick. Let's make it a little thinner, you know, just encouraging Um, them to really broaden their horizons of what they think of like basic things are um, and really just giving them feedback, you know, in a positive way of like, hey, you did such a great job of this. Let's tweak this just a little bit. Um, So it's an ongoing training that we offer them. So, but we do have SOPs. We have a long list of different uh, courses and things that we do. And then we also have like shadow your mentor. So basically, um, one of my assistants right now is shadowing my, my direct assistant, which you've been interacting with sometime in email. Um, and she wants to learn how to be an executive assistant. And so like, she's starting to take on some of those tasks. And so once she's learned, you know, the basics of the tools and the softwares and things like that, then she shadows somebody to be able to ask those weird questions that it comes from a place of insecurity, but just needs somebody to be able to say, you got this, like you can, right. you got it and you did it right. I like, I love that because it's really empowering other women and other moms. And I think that that's so important. Like that is the whole premise of mom owned and operated is to really empower and elevate other moms. And um, sometimes people don't want to take on newbies because they need so much handholding, but I love what you're doing because you're actually holding their hands, you're giving them, you know, the encouragement, the skill level that they need in order to bring in money, but also to be at home with their children. Yes. Yes. Which is a challenge in and of itself. Uh, I know yesterday, one of my assistants said that their toddler was exploring and sent me a picture of the refrigerator and there were eggs like cracked all over the floor. And my first thought was like, Oh, they're such cute, like tiny humans. But it was like, I really do feel that, you know, Um, having been there twice. And it's like, it'll be fine. Let's just clean it up and then it'll be all right. Um, And so just little things like that, like just laughing with them in a fun way of like, yes, you will get through this. Like toddlers are amazing humans um, at exploring. (laughs) Right. And it just reminds you of when your kids were young, because, you know, yeah. our, you know, your daughter, your youngest daughter is six, but my youngest is almost 12. And I look back at their pictures and I'm just like, oh my God, you were so cute. Remember this? And they, know. Could, they could be less interested. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're over here like about to cry. Yeah. Um, you know, my oldest is graduating high school this year. So yes, you're like, where did my baby go? Right. Like a time flies so fast. I was saying this to um, someone yesterday, it goes by so quickly, but when you're in the moment, it feels like it's going so slow, right? It's like, yes. oh, this, this is torture sometimes, you know? <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, yes. And the next thing you know, it's, you know, been years since that moment. Yeah. Yes. So if another mom, well, I would say, you know, if another mom came to you and she said that she had a business idea, like what kind of advice do you think that you would give her? So the first advice I would give her is to start, just, just start, just to sign that LLC document, you know, get those, those little things done that you got to do to be able to be legal and just start. 
mm-hmm. you will figure it out. You know, when me and my mom first started Get Dusty, the whole thing was going to be just transaction coordination for real estate agents. And the more I kept talking to my mom, I have so much experience from being a real estate agent of all the different things that people don't tell you like, hey, pretty much a real estate agent is a business owner. You know, you have to do marketing, you have to do negotiations, you have to finagle a whole bunch of people's emotions, you have to be able to do customer service, Um, you have to be able to set up expectations, you know, manage people's schedules, all these different things. And she was like, why don't we just do virtual assistants as a whole and just hire stay-at-home moms? And yeah. I was like, done, we're doing right. it. Right. Um, so, and that's where Get Dusty is now. So, yeah, I work with so many people who start in one place and then they end up in a completely other place because they think that the thing that they're doing now is going to be what they're going to continue to do. But as they start to do it, they realize, uh, this maybe was not a great fit for me. And then we try to figure out, well, what maybe is the next pivot for you? But one thing that I did when I was rebuilding my business was a business plan. And I can't tell you how, like, I didn't do it the first time because I didn't think that I needed it because it was mostly, you know, like, I'm going to just be a web designer. Like, how hard is that? I don't need a business plan to figure this out. But I wish that I would have because it went into a lot of the important things that I needed and that I could have used. And a lot of um, moms don't realize or, or business owners don't realize that if you have a business plan, you can use that for additional funding like grants or crowdsourcing or um, even loans and other ways to build your business without having that constant client chase. And so I think that that's something important to think about too, like alternative methods of funding, because I think us as entrepreneurs, our thing is like, you know, as much as I hate the hustle mentality, like it's always like hustle, hustle, hustle. I got to go get a new client. I got a new, it's like always the client chase. Yeah. Yeah. And and the, the fact of the matter is, is if you start really looking into the people that really, really push the hustle mentality, they hustle really, really hard. But the thing that gets overlooked is they also play and rest just as hard as they hustle. So what does that tell you? Yes, hard work and working is really important, but also so is playing and so is resting. So, and, and, and this is true for, I mean, people like Grant Cardone, Gary Vee, I mean, all of those people, like if you go and you like really watch what they do, like they, they, they work just as hard as they play. And just as hard as they rest. And so really, you've got to be able to have a balance of, yes, you need to work hard. You need to be able to, you know, hustle in your business. And I always tell my assistants, work smarter, not harder, um, and figure out ways to just make it more efficient. And also, when when it's out of office hours, Turn, turn off everything like it, it will always be there work will always be there your kids won't always be two your kids won't always be 17 they won't always be six go enjoy them you will always be married to your, your husband for 16 years it's only going to get your the time is going to go by yeah. so always make time for yourself and also for your family because that's why you're doing the hustle is so that you can give your family things and yeah, but I'm know. saying, I don't say, I'm saying you don't need the hustle. You don't yeah. need the hustle. Like, you know, because we talked about the, the balance, you know, work-life balance. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't think that that is possible. I do think it it's is. Possible. It is 100% possible, you know, and a lot of the things that um, they perceive of, of that is, um, you know, it's, I have to work 24 seven. That That's yeah. what everybody thinks is like that hustle is I have to work 24 hours a day. No, you don't, right. you don't like that. That email can be answered tomorrow. I mean, barring somebody's dying, you don't, it, it doesn't have to be done, you know? Um, and really letting go of the guilt is the key to that, you know, because they think that if they are present 24 seven at their work, that 
they are going to magically just do it overnight, you know, but the fact of the matter is, is barring somebody dying, it, it really will be okay if it waits till the next day. Well, but what may not be is you, whatever you your, your kid. Yeah. yeah. You might, you might miss your kid making scrambled eggs for the first time ever and being super duper excited about it, you know, but, and you won't ever be able to get that back. Well, let me ask you a question then, because I feel like um, a lot of this has to do with boundaries, right? And um, I think that at least for me, when I worked in corporate, the, they teach you to be really responsive, like really reactive to all things. Meaning if an email comes in and it's been five minutes, it's like, what is she doing? Why hasn't she replied to my email? right? It came in. And so they teach you, keep your email open. When an email comes in, you reply to your email, right? So I feel like in corporate, they teach you to be reactive. And so that was part of my thing was when I started my business, I was very reactive. Uh, Anything would happen. I was reactive. I wasn't. And I think for entrepreneurs, it's better if you're proactive, you need to, you know, shut your email off have your email not on your phone, check your email at certain times during the day, reply then, that way you're mm-hmm. establishing some boundaries and you can't be there all the time. So do you think that boundaries is would maybe help people to like alleviate yes. that guilt? Yes, that is actually one of the things when I took on real estate agents and I was mentoring them, the, one of the first conversations I would have with them is, what are your boundaries? And they would look at me and they go, what do you mean boundaries? It was like, well, how do you want to tell your clients that you interact with them? And they're like, well, why would I tell them that? Um, Well, how are you going to explain to them that you're not going to answer the phone after seven unless there's an actual emergency? And they're like, but won't I lose clients that way? Yes, the ones you don't need the ones who are not going to respect you the ones that are not going to value your time the ones that are not going to value your opinion Mm -hmm. you're weeding out the people that don't care about you as a human right and therefore you're only going to get to work with the people that are going to say oh my god you did an amazing job can i give you extra can i give you a bonus like Mm -hmm. oh my goodness like you're you stayed after you know while something else was going on. Can I feed you dinner? Like you're going to get those people that are going to value your time and your opinions because you took the time at the first meeting to say, look, I, I understand like this is a really big purchase for you for real estate. And I will respond to you and I will be interactive with you. But after seven o'clock, my phone goes right wherever. If I look at my phone and I see that I see a message and I have time, I will respond to it. Otherwise, after my kids go to school, I will pick it back up and I will answer any questions, any concerns, any comments that you have. And that really sets them up to know Jennifer cares about what's going on with this transaction, but she also has a family and she has a life too. Yeah. And And, and I never lost anyone. Yes, it is 100% important because then you're, you're preventing burnout. You're mm-hmm. telling people how, you, how to interact with them. So many people are afraid to educate their clients on how to interact with them. Yes. And I think that especially as entrepreneurs, they're more, they're afraid because of just like you said, it's like, I got to please everyone. There's a lot of people pleasing going on. And um, yeah, I think that if somebody is going to be, a pain, they're going to be, you know, it's like, well, then they're just not going to be a good fit for me. Right. Right. And maybe their needs are just not something that I can, um, can handle because I have had clients who maybe were not a good fit for me, but I was needing the money and regretted every single second of it. It was not worth it in the end. Right. Because no, it wasn't never, ever, ever. Is it worth taking the money? If I could go back to, there were several clients and tell my younger self when I was just starting out as real estate, that the money is never worth it. Mm -hmm. I would be so much better off so much faster, Um, you know, really stick to those clients. And so that was one of the things when we started get desky is like, 
I told my mom, I was like, we're going to be picky. And she's like, why? And I was like, because I only want to deal with the people who want to be here. I don't want to deal with everyone because mm. we're not for everyone. And that is 100% okay because someone else is for that person that is not for us. Right, right. And it's not hard to find clients, I think, for virtual assistants. I mean, I every time I turn around, somebody's saying, I need a VA. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, uh, that is true. So we don't take everybody though. Um, just because we really do feel like everyone has that that match of like who would work well for us. Um, and some people we we refer them to other people. We are like, we really think that you would do much better here, just because of personalities. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes it has to do with skill sets that we don't yet possess. And so we don't, um, we will literally not take somebody for various reasons, but we will be like, Hey, but we think that these people would be a good fit for you. And I think that that's the smart thing to do because then a better client fit is going to come along for you anyways. Um, yes. because I, I had to start, I started doing that with my, some of my design clients, you know, it was almost as if I could tell when we had our first call, if it was a good fit or if it wasn't. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And I think, I think a lot of people, when you actually tell them like, look, I really don't think that you're a good fit for us, but I really think you would be a good fit for this person. I feel like when you're genuine about that, people respect you more. And mm -hmm. when you have something that they could really, really use and really need, they will come back to you. Or they will refer somebody to you be like, hey, you know, these people do a really good job of this thing. I can't do it, but these people can. Yeah. And so it's like helping one another, just finding those best fits. I feel like that's so important in this, um, in this industry is just to help one another, right? It's like there's yes. enough clients for all of us and you don't have to be greedy about it. We can yes. all, we can all yes. work. <laughs> Yes. Yes. And that, and that's all we really want to do is just be able to work, provide for our families, have that freedom and that flexibility. Yeah. So I love, you know, I love always talking about family and business, but my most fun topic is talking about what are you doing for yourself? So Jen, like how are Jennifer, my apologies, how are you remembering yourself? So sometimes, you know, we talked about with this before, but sometimes, you know, working from home, uh, I get stuck in my little cave, as my husband calls it, and I will just call a friend and be like, hey, I'm tired of working in my office. Um, can can we go and like you know, work at lunch or uh, let's go get coffee or um, sometimes I take a bath at night and I'll be like, look. I need you to just give me like 15 minutes, like no one come in. I want to read my book and not do anything. And I think the biggest change for me was not feeling guilty about taking that time. Yeah. Um, for the longest time, you know, even being as a mom, it was, I, I would feel guilty about sometimes even just telling my husband, I need a shower, mm. you know? And really when I started like just not feeling guilty about taking care of myself, even with basic things, like it, it made such a huge difference in my family. Like my family was happier I was, because I was happier. I wasn't being grumpy at the end of the day because I was looking forward to the end of the day because then I get to have like that 10, 15 minutes, you know, every once in a while to like sit in the tub and just like do nothing. Um, and so it, it, it makes it more enjoyable for everybody else too. Yeah. I missed my tub. I moved into a place that my bathroom only has a shower and I am missing it because I would love taking my hot, hot baths with my, um, my, you know, my Epsom salts in there and just like trying to soak away my, my day, <laughs> all the stuff went down the drain. But, um, I mean, we still have a bathtub, but it's in the kid's bathroom and I'm just not willing to do that. So <laughs> It's just, I'm like, mm -mm, it's just not worth it to me at this point. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you got boys, so I mean, I ha- I only have girls, so it, it might be sort of okay if I were to do that. Uh, but I kind of feel you on the kids, like sometimes, just yeah. They're well, they're just they're not clean enough for me. I mean, I mean, <laughs> honestly, the bathroom it doesn't look bad. It's just that I I I'm so crazy about certain things. Um, and then I get you on, on feeling guilty about taking a shower. I remember when my kids were younger and my ex-husband would come home and I would just feel like, oh, I need a, I need a shower. And I would feel like not that as if it was owed to me, almost as if he was giving me a treat, you know, like, <laughs> like yes. yes. And I would hurry as fast as I could to get back down there and take the kids. And, you know, I, I didn't realize at the time that it was a feeling of guilt, but I do now. Yeah. 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 I, I didn't realize it at the time either. It took me a while to realize that too. Like it was just a self-imposed guilt, you mm-hmm. know, it's like now that I'm a mom, like I don't get that 10, 15 minutes, you know, I don't get that time. And really that's just a limiting thing of like, yes, you want to be able to provide for your kids, but you can't provide for your kids and you can't provide for your kids well if you're not providing for yourself either. Um, and it's really teaching your kids to, to unhealthy habits as well. I know I teach mine all the time. I'm like, this is called boundaries and I'm going to need you to leave. So I love you, but please go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they're like, but mom, I just love you. And I'm like, I love you too, but mommy needs this. <laughs> I need to be alone. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, so where can everyone find you and, um, online? So uh, LinkedIn is probably the best. Uh, I'm, I'm on there all the time. Um, it's probably my favorite uh, platform to be on. You could just search Jennifer Bennett and, and you'll find me. My logo it says mom, uh, wife, mom, CEO, realtor. Um, I can, I can provide you the link. I believe it's going to be below, um, Mm -hmm. to find me on LinkedIn. Um, if you're interested about our services, um, you can schedule a call with me as well too. So, and your website, get Yes. Yes. And your, and the website. Yes. You can sign up for on there. So you can, you can go straight. And if you do want a virtual assistant, you can sign up there for us. Well, thank you so much. It's been such a yeah. pleasure chatting with you. Yes. I appreciate it. Yes, I'm looking forward to uh, talking with all the moms out there and letting them know you can do it. Yes, they can for sure. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Thank you again. You're welcome. And there you have it. I want to encourage you to remember that being a mom who runs her own business is not easy. We all struggle, but just keep moving forward and don't forget to make time for yourself. As moms, we are usually the first thing to go to the bottom of the list. If your business is overwhelming you and you need real solutions, not just some sugar-coated suggestions, apply to work with me at ritasuzanne.com apply.